Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to Lovey in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to Lovey in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to Lovey America and become Amer American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a new talk show program featuring the lives of immigrants knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. Brought to you by Think Tank Hawaii and the Kingsfield Law Office. We invite renowned immigrants to discuss their life stories, immigration adventures, and the contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is Saraswati Singh. As a prosecutor in the Adult Criminal Division of the Ramsey County Attorney Office, Saraswati works on a diverse team for the first Korean-American chief prosecutor in the country. She is past president of, of the American Constitutional Society, Minneapolis St. Paul Lawyers Chapter, and an active member of the Minnesota Asian Pacific American Bar Association, NAPABA. Singh, Saraswati Singh was appointed by Minnesota Governor Tim Walz to serve on the Council on Asian Pacific Minnesotans and was elected to executive committee of the council. A second generation Indian American originally from Brooklyn, Saraswati moved to Washington DC for an internship with her hometown Senator Hillary Clinton. She was worked in government affairs, worked with elected officials and helped build a coalition to help leaders make better, more informed decisions. She believes it's important to see the representation of Asian Americans and women at the legislative and the governing board tables so that all Americans can work together toward a happier, healthier, and more just future. Saraswati is running for Hennepin County Attorney. Welcome, Saraswati. We are so happy to have you here. Hi, Chang. It's so good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, we, we have known each other for a while. We both serve on the Council on Asian Pacific Minnesotans, but we never get a chance to talk about your personal life. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you to share with us so uh, your family background, your parents perhaps, and, uh, and uh, how do you settle in Minnesota? Sure. Yeah, we never got to know these parts of each other. Um, so my family came to the U.S. because of my grandfather. Um, he studied at the University of Iowa for a journalism degree, mm -hmm. and he went back to India and reported on uh, the British who were occupying and colonized India at the time, and actually talked about censorship. And he saw a lot of awful things. And when India became independent, uh, he became part of the UN mission for India and ended up in New York City where there's the UN building. Um, anyway, there's a long story. He became a professor later on, just like Yu Chang. Um, and my, uh, my dad came over and my grandma, um, we grew up in New York and then um, my dad had an arranged marriage with my mom from India, northern India, Bihar. It's a very poor area of the country, um, mostly farming. Um, and they're very proud of my grandfather who ended up here in the U.S. And my mom really focused on education for all her kids. And so I ended up going to Colgate University, which is in upstate New York. I had conservative professors who helped me um, get an internship with my hometown senator, like you mentioned. So I ended up in DC and it opened up this world of possibilities that I, like it was my dream to do politics, but I didn't think I could actually do it because there weren't really that many people that looked like me in it. And um, anyway, I ended up working for Hillary Clinton, did a good job got a job with Biden, ended up managing a government affairs department, building coalitions and working on things like immigration, transportation bills, um, things like that. And then I went to law school because I realized everyone higher than me was doing that. And 
I was like, oh, that's a good fit for me. I like laws. So I ended up uh, getting into the University of Minnesota Law School, which is a top 20 school. And that's how I ended up here in Minnesota. And then my siblings, they came out with me because they got, they, one of them did a, uh, got into residency here at Hennepin Healthcare, that's what it's called now. And another one went to the University of Minnesota too, because I said it was so great here. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me and my family. Well, wonderful, thanks so much for sharing. It's, it's great to hear such an inspiring uh, and beautiful American story. I, I saw you brought some pictures to share with us. Why not you tell us about the stories behind these pictures? Yeah, so I love this picture. Um, a few years ago, maybe it's a little more than a few years ago, um, I was with the American Constitution Society. I still am. It's a progressive legal organization. And um, they helped me get sworn in and from the U.S. Supreme Court bar, which was so exciting. And so I got to bring one person with me. And I brought my mom who dressed up in her sari, which you can see. And while we were there, we had breakfast and Justice Ginsburg stopped by. And I tapped Justice Ginsburg on her so shoulder. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. And I said, can I take a picture with you and my mom? Because my mom, um, she wasn't allowed to go to school until she was in the eighth grade when she had another family member help advocate for her because she was a girl that lived in a time and place where girls didn't go to school. And so to, to show like her to the justice, who was the top person in her law school class and broke so many boundaries and got educated herself. It was just like, it was just really exciting. And I wanted to, I was really happy my mom got to meet her. Yeah, thank you. That's exciting. Yeah, how about next one? Oh yeah, this has been a long time. So that's my grandma all the way on the side seated. And that's my grandfather, the one that worked at the United Nations. Um, and that little kid over there, that's me. Um, my, I, I loved my grandparents, they both passed. Yeah. And um, my grandmother, had an arranged marriage with my grandfather when she was nine and he was 18. And um, they didn't understand because my grandfather said he's gonna keep going to school and he's gonna wait until she's older when she's an adult. He was very progressive for his time, I now realize. But um, my grandfather was able to achieve all those things, like work at the UN, become a professor because of my grandmother. And he would say that because she took care of my dad and she would save up money selling little things to pay my grandfather's tuition fees for school. Mm -hmm. So I just really like that because it's a rather progressive relationship for that time. Um, and in the context of arranged marriage too. Yeah, I miss my grandparents dearly too. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, yeah now you're in Minnesota. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So this is me in Minnesota. It's the land of 10,000 lakes. So we have more than 10,000 lakes. We have 14,000. Yeah. 14,000 lakes, yeah. And which lake is that? Lake Cajon? Yeah, lake which Cajon. is now changed to its an indigenous name, oh. Bade Makaska, because mm -hmm. Calhoun used to be, well, not a very nice man. I, um, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is me wearing, oh, yes. And then this last picture um, is me in Brooklyn on our sofa there. Mm. I think my mom, um, my mom or my grandmother had uh, sewed that, that sofa cover. Um, and I'm wearing the top of a salwar kameej. So, yeah. <laughs> Me as a oh, cute. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing the photos. That's, that's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, oh, now you, you grow from a little cute Indian girl, <laughs> and uh, now you're a pretty serious prosecutor and in, 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 uh, at Ramsey County, one of our biggest counties in Minnesota, and where's mm -hmm. uh, our capital, St. Paul, seated. T tell us about your, 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 how, how, could you just share some? some thoughts and how, how, how do you like the job and uh, what do you do and what's sure. your plan? Yeah. Yeah. I love the job. It took so much to get it. And I, um, 
I told you that I came to the University of Minnesota Law School. I got a concentration in criminal justice. The school had just started offering it. And I worked for two federal judges and in Hennepin County for a district court judge where I got to see prosecutors and defense attorneys. And um, I grew up distrusting the criminal justice system. So I was surprised that I liked the prosecutors <laughs> and that I thought trials were so much fun. And um, I wanted to do it. I wasn't sure if I could do it myself, um, but I wanted to learn. I ended up going over to the Minnesota Attorney General's office and doing both civil and criminal work. And so getting a lot of time in the courtroom. I was in the division where you were in the courtroom the most. Mm -hmm. And um, and then John Toy recruited me. He met me at an ACS event to join his office as a prosecutor. And it was it was my dream come true, you know? Um, because he you mentioned earlier, he's the first Korean. American top prosecutor in the country. And he's an immigrant. Um, and he grew up in Minnesota and he dealt with some difficult things like people setting fire to his mailbox, people saying and doing things that weren't very nice um, because of his, you know, the way he looked and his family. And um, he set about creating a division that was, that is now 30% people of color. And many of our victims, our survivors, and our witnesses, they're immigrants, they're refugees, they're people that don't speak English well or with an accent or don't speak English at all. And um, I would have never known about this unless I actually did the job. And now I handle murder, sexual assault, domestic assault cases, everything in between. Um, I, I work with those victims, right? I had um, a refugee from Iraq who was one of the victims in my case, and we used an interpreter. Um, I've learned to do so many things, and it's so fulfilling because I feel like many times you don't realize why diversity of all different types is, is important in an office. But now that I'm here, I'm like, this is why I was meant to be here. So that when victims of crimes, and I think all of us have been the victim of at least one crime in our life or know someone, whether it's domestic abuse or um, DWI, right? Things like that. Um, but to be able to advocate for victims who are scared and they're, they don't know what to do and they just don't understand the process, it's just so fulfilling and then when you're able to help them feel safe, I had um, a sexual assault case where there was a seven-year-old li seven Liberian girl and the family was a family of refugees, actually. The family unit was created because they created it. The, the war in their home country had, had killed so many people, they created their own family. We were able to hold um, the person that committed the sexual assault on the little kids accountable. And it was just so rewarding to know, like, you can give a voice to the voiceless, the people that even our society or our criminal justice system in the past hasn't done a very good job of advocating for. And so it's nice to, like, you know, help little girls that used to look like me, you know, or how I used to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for 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 your service and we really appreciate to have people like you to work in our criminal justice system and i admire prosecutors i admire all litigators particularly prosecutors <laughs> you know you know i went to law school and at the same law school uh, u of m and um, i i told my when i did the trial practice for a year uh, my professor encouraged me to to do litigation, but I told him there's no way. Can, I want to sleep. I want to have a pretty, you know, you know, normal life. I want to have dinner every day at home. So I, I will only do transaction, not the litigation. But I, I do admire the litigators, particularly litigation on behalf of the government, the prosecutors. But I do have a question for you. I, I because I'm teaching a law course at the OMM, this semester. And one of the debate topic I put up, give to the students was the American criminal justice system is fundamentally fair. And the student debated on this. It was a very heated uh, debate. 
and both party, uh, both sides presented uh, ample evidence to support their argument. The American criminal justice system is fundamentally fair. The other side obviously would argue is fundamentally unfair. So what was your assessment? What's your general comments on this, our yeah. criminal justice system? It's interesting because if you asked me this question when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. I think I would have given you a different answer than I, I would now. So there's a lot of problems in our criminal justice system, for sure. Mm -hmm. And the problems that we have in our society, they exist within the justice system, right? Because mm -hmm. we have racial inequity, racism, sexism, the list goes on and on. But I also think about where we started from now, you know? So I, I talked about my grandfather. Um, under the British, there wasn't really a fair system. And now we have some big countries invading other countries in the world. And we have author, author, authoritarian countries where people will sometimes even pretend it's a fair process, but mm -hmm. it's really not. The person in charge just says, I don't like this person, this person disagrees with me, or they're getting a lot of political backing and I feel like they're a threat and I'm just gonna throw them into jail or prison and kill them. Or maybe have a, a trial that's like 30 minutes with that's not really real or legitimate with actual evidence presented. So why do I say this? Mm -hmm. We have so many problems in the American, American legal justice system, but we actually know about them. We're talking about them and we're trying to do something about it. And it's so much better than what other countries in the world have. The fact that we're even able to talk about it tells us something. And I'm running for Hennepin County Attorney. That's to be the top prosecutor for Minneapolis and the surrounding area. That's where George Floyd was murdered and where the officer that killed him, Chauvin, worked. We're talking about that. We're trying to address it. And not all, that was an awful, a horrible thing that happened. But what did prosecutors do? What did the justice system do? They held the officer accountable. They charged the case. They fully litigated it. They got a jury that was representative and the jury found the officer guilty. And then the judge sentenced him to prison and he's sitting in prison. That's the justice system working. So I think fundamentally it's fair, but we have so many things we need to fix. Very well said, Saraswati. I, I cannot agree with you more. And my students, they are obviously, they are in their early 20s, you know, liberal uh, college students. They are, uh, they have a lot of complaints, and but they are, all of them are extremely smart and uh, passionate. But uh, the, the debate is, the, I, I probably will reach the same, you know, uh, conclusion. You know, when when I were in my early 20s, I went to think the system is so unfair, so many problems. But when you grow older, when you work in the system, you, you want to be a change. If you want to be a change agent, you have to be part of the system and you have to accept the legitimacy of the system and try to improve it not, uh, instead of uh, radicalize, radicalize it. It's very well said. And you basically answered my next question. It's about the, the George Floyd in the Derek Chauvin uh, uh, trial. It's, uh, I, I get to have a comment. I think that we are extremely proud to be uh, a Minnesotan. And Minnesota is such a, a state, it's well managed, it's transparent, and it's civil, and uh, respect fundamental human decency. And it's uh, fact matters in this state. And we still have a belief in right and wrong. So. Correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. It, it's Derek Chauvin was the first white police officer got convicted for killing a black suspect in the state of Minnesota, isn't it? I, I think you're right that he's the first person 
first white officer to be convicted of killing a black man. Yeah. That's Not, quite... I don't think he was a suspect. I mean, yes, there was a counterfeit $20 bill, but I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's nothing in the context. Exactly. Yeah. A, a, exactly. And we all talk about our early 20s. And we, uh, early 20s, where were you in early 20s? You were in DC, right? In I was. You were in um, DC, yeah. I was working in the, um, in D.C., in this U.S. Senate, in the uh, Russell Building. That's where Hillary oh, Clinton oh. was, senate. she was senator at the time. That's where she worked. And it was, it, I remember, I had stars in my eyes because all these people I saw on TV, they were walking <laughs> oh, in the hallway. Yeah. And uh, one time we saw Obama, he had just been elected, and he was in the basement of the Dirksen Building while they were getting his uh, Senate office set up. And he got lost and asked for directions to the bathroom. <laughs> and the, the Black man intern that I was with, like, nearly swooned. It was just, it was such an exciting time because oh my goodness. Yeah. I got to meet all these people that I read in the news, Senator Ted Kennedy at the time, and just realized like they were real people mm -hmm. who had regular flaws or big flaws, but so many of them cared so much and that I could do it too. And so for everyone that's watching, if you want to run for office or just want to try for your dreams, go for it. Because what's the worst that can happen? You end up in the same place that you already are. <laughs> but if you just take that chance, the life your life trajectory could change. And that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton gave me that shot by, by offering me that internship and my life changed. Yeah, bravo, bravo. Uh, so I, I was in Beijing in my early 20s, by the way. And I was in college then in graduate school. But uh, so many years have passed. And if you were give you some give some advice to your early 20s, so what, what would you say? I would say, I know you feel awkward and you don't know where your life is going. And it feels like other people are doing really well because they say all sorts of wonderful things about themselves. But try not to think about other people. And if there's things that you like that they're doing, learn how they did it and then do it yourself. And the biggest thing is everyone feels fear. Everyone does. But the trick is to go and walk through that fear and it'll be okay. And actually, even if you fail, that's part of the process and it makes you better and remember how you feel when you failed. So that when you rise up in whatever profession you're in, you reach your hand out and you help other people, even if they failed to help show them the way. Because we all are hopefully learning and growing and, and this is life. It's trying things and doing well. And then when you do poorly, you learn from it, and then you end up doing even better. Wonderful, wonderful advice. And what you just said reminded me that one of my favorite philosopher, uh, Indian philosopher, Chris Namodi, and once said that you are not responsible for the for the you exist in other people's mind. Now we're going to get to uh, our final segment, recommendations. We want to hear uh, recommendations from our guest. Let me start, and because I'm going to recommend Chris Namodi. It's my, you know, I, I'm not sure. I told you about it. I'm a practicing Buddhist, but I also uh, uh, a big fan of Chris Namodi. And I want to hear your recommendation. Is there any, any book or movies you want to recommend to our audience? Sure. In terms of books, maybe this is a little selfish, but my grandfather wrote a book. Oh. Um, it's what called In Search of Self by yes, Bhagwat Singh. Self. And um, I didn't understand it when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you say In Search of Self? And my parents say I'm a lot like him. And now I understand. Mm. And it talks about India, colonialism, 
coming to the United States and um, really the meaning of life and what is a life worth living. I think as you get older, you start thinking about those things. <laughs> I probably sound very old now. <laughs> no, not at all. You just sound, just sound a normal, a very <laughs> normal uh, prosecutor. I <laughs> have a profound thinking of human nature and have observed, you know, the, the life and the death and uh, tragedy in life. I really appreciate that. In search of self That's by right. any old grandpa's na uh, first name, yeah, Pagwood Singh. Pagwood Singh. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, we have only uh, a, a minute left. I want to, uh, uh, I want, uh, you know, as we said, you, you're running for uh, Henry County uh, uh, attorney and uh, the, the biggest county in the state of Minnesota. And we have uh, like a minute. Is there any message you want to tell us, people, uh, uh, potential voters in Minnesota and uh, uh, in Hawaii, because our station is Hawaii. Yeah, yes to both. Um, so my name is Sir Swati Singh, and I'm running for Hennepin County Attorney. That's to be the top prosecutor for Minneapolis and the sound surrounding area. And so they handle murder cases, sexual assault cases, domestic assault cases, and everything in between, including carjackings. And I do exactly that. I take cases to trial. Um, litigate them, right? Have all those sleepless nights, Chang, that you talk about because you stay up working. And my platform is police accountability, racial equity, and public safety. And within the public safety aspect, it's addressing violent crime, but also anti-Asian hate crime. I know we have just really a few seconds left, um, but I wanna say that I'm the right person for the job because I'm a prosecutor, I know how to do the job. I'm progressive. I bring my life experiences with me. And actually, Senator Klobuchar was the same age as me, 37, when she first ran for Hennepin County Attorney and won. So she was 37 and she won, and I'm 37. And when I get elected, I'll be the first woman of color ever in the position. So, um, it would be a historic election. I'm super excited. And um, people throughout the country, including Hawaii, can support me by going to my website, which is sirswatisingh.com, and contributing. Everything helps. We have a $3 option all the way up to the 500 and more option. Um, and also following me on social media and spreading the word. Um, we're looking for volunteers, especially folks in the immigrant community because it's important to raise our voices up. And my mom, she doesn't speak English well, but she's so proud of me and doing all this work. And I wanna show that we have value. And just because we have an accent doesn't mean that we're stupid or dumb, that we bring so much to the table. And we, she's a nursing aide, she was working throughout the pandemic. You know, we just, just lift up our voices and show that we matter and that we're smart and, I'm just so excited about the campaign and so excited to do the show with you, Chang. Thank you, Saswadi. It's wonderful to have you with us today. And hail to the uh, prosecutor. Hail to, thank you so much for oh, your goodness. service. Hail, yeah, hail to our wonderful senator, the global chair, our wonderful senator, Tina Smith. And thank you again for your service. And we are very excited to have you work uh, as our uh, Ramsey County uh, uh, prosecutor and potentially for our Hennepin County attorney. And uh, I just uh, look forward to, to uh, having you back on the show again and we can celebrate. Thank you again. And uh, this is a nation of immigrants. And our guest is Saraswati Sin, Ramsey County, Assistant Ramsey County attorney running for Hennepin County attorney. Thank you. Aloha. See you.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.